Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do unbiased price action analysis. Could a top be forming for the S&P 500? That is the big question that I want to talk to you guys about today. In today's video, I want to zoom out here. All right, I'm going to just get rid of all my levels and lines. I'm going to get it back, but I'm going to zoom out all the way back until we can see the all-time high right around here 479.98 down to the october 2022 low around 348 11 i want to make sure i put the coordinates in correctly all right so we are testing a very critical resistant level right now based on the Fibonacci levels. All right. For a lower high to be in because we got all time high. Now we want to look at this high back in July. For a lower high to be in, critical support levels must fail. And we look at hit we hit a July high and it led to breaking down that 78.6 fib level at 451.7. This level was cleared back in mid-July, and then towards early August, we broke it back down. That was a breakdown. So looking at the higher higher time frame zoomed out, we can see that we are back testing this false breakout setup. Okay, so we are at a very critical zone here. Spy. When I say we, I mean the spy. Okay, as of right now, it is possible that the July high is a lower high compared to the all time high, and it can stay possible if spy defends. 451.76 now let me get my levels back so you guys know that crit that critical level of 451.76 and why it's critical now I've zoomed back in here 451.7 is this blue line right there okay and you can see that we defended that level you can see here on the 30 minute chart we Got very close to my 453 level. I had a 453 level. Got pretty close intraday, pre-market, and all that heavy stuff to testing it. But we end up having a false breakout setup. A false breakout setup of that 451.7 level with bears succeeding in defending the breakout. Okay? Bears succeeded in defending the breakout. Now, can they show follow-through? So I want you guys to understand how critical that 451.7 level is. As long as bears are defending it, it is possible that July high is a lower high compared to the all-time high. Does that make sense? As long as bears can defend, defend 451.7. Now I made a YouTube short yesterday about how I would trust the rejection of 451.7. We're talking on a higher time frame here of the daily chart. And I mentioned 449 and breakdown of 448 would be the levels I'd be watching. Now, I mentioned 447, but the green trend line slopes up. We we recaptured this green trend line. That was from March 13th low. Okay, you guys should know about that level if you are a continued wa a continuing watcher, supporter of Uncle Charters. All right, but that green trend line, we recaptured it. So when do I trust a rejection from resistant? When it leads to breaking down critical support levels. That's how a top is put in. A bottom is put in when it recaptures a critical resistant level or it clears a critical resistant level. It's the same with the bear case, the bear direction. All right? So, yes, we are defending. Bears are defending where they need to. Not letting the spy close above 451.7. That's good for the bears. But they need to show follow through and break down 448.5. That's where the green trend line is now. If they do, 446 
and down to 443 would be in play. Okay, 443 is a fib level and this bull flag. If that breaks down, we got a massive false breakout setup here. Could be very bearish, bring us back down to 439, maybe down to 438 ish. Okay, that'll be a nice, nice move to the downside, but it needs to trigger by breaking down 448.5. All right, break back down that green trend line. That's going to be very bearish. Continue to defend 451.7 and break down 448.5. And this could be a lower high. This right here could be a lower high compared to July high. All right, now, bull case scenario is. We could consolidate a little bit more under this 451.7 level. We could consolidate and chop as long as it doesn't break down 449 and 448.5 zone. And it's basin that would favor the bull case scenario. And of course, a breakout, a daily chart breakout of 451.7 would be pretty bullish, in my opinion, putting upper targets in play 453 455 gap fill at 456.5 ish 458 previous pivot high in july 31st and of course the july high at 459.4 it needs and must break down 451.7 to trigger those shorts all right so remember bear case below 448.5 bull case above 451.7 otherwise we're chopping we have nfp tomorrow hopefully nfp can serve as some catalyst to give us some movement triple q here is in, in breakout mode you see my orange trend line test here test here breakout on wednesday second close today however this candle right here look at that wick selling pressure okay if bears Want to turn this around. Give us that false breakout setup. This means break back below 375.6. If that happens, look to short. We're going to have a big false breakout setup. Could get down lower down to 371.4 is what I am favoring. And probably lower down to 368.5. Below that, we could drop down to 367.4 and 364.3-ish. Could be a very nice move. But it needs to break down, give us that false breakout at 375.6. Otherwise, Triple Q would still be in breakout mode. 381 is the target. It needs to break out. Uh, yet today's high was 379.7. We could break that out. We get to 381. Above that is the gap fill at 282.3. And maybe we can go back and test 284, uh, 384.5. Excuse me. All right. So below 375.6, bearish. If we can stay above 375.6, Triple Q is still in breakout mode. Watch for the breakouts of those resistance for more follow through. We could consolidate and chop, but if it chop, 375.6 must hold on any pullback if you're a bull. Dow Jones is looking bearish. While Triple Q is in breakout mode, Dow Jones is looking bearish. Let me explain why. Here is the orange trend line that I have here. Test here, test here. Breakout, false breakout, and what happened today? Back test of that orange trend line. Very similar to how SPY is back testing that FIB level at 451.7. Trying to confirm that the false breakout is legit. Dow Jones is doing the same thing. And in this case, it showed selling pressure. Hot stove rejection. It even broke down my 349 support level. It is looking bearish. As long as below 349, I'm bearish. 346.5 is in play with 344 and 342.5 to the downside. Okay, 341 and 339 is below that. Okay, I can only get bearish. Well, to start, uh, excuse me, I can only get bullish to start with would be a recapture of 349. That would be a good start because we got a false breakout setup as well. Rejection from critical resistance combined with a false breakout. So bulls need to put in some work. Recapture 349. Cancel the false breakout and get above 351. Recapture the orange trend line. And then I would be bullish on Dow Jones. But as of right now, I am bearish. IWM. Could not break above 189. Washed above it, but could not. Bears are still defending it. 187 is critical support based on the green trend line. For this to be a lower high, 
187 must fail. Break back below the green trend line. If you made money on this up move, do not be greedy. Please secure profits. We play it level to level here on Uncle Charters' channel. Below 187 is bearish. Above 189 is bullish, but it needs to show follow through by clearing 190 to put 190.4 and 193 in play, all right? Tesla, just consolidating still. After the big move on Tuesday, still consolidating, okay? As of right now, resistance at 260. If it clears 260, I got a fib level at 263. Above 263 is very uh, bullish with 265. Gap fill at 267 and 270 in play above, okay? I got support at 257 and 253. Those are the support levels that bears need to break down. If they break it down, 250 in play. Below 250, I'll be bear biased. I would favor 240 testing, but of course... Level to level, 247.5 and 244 in play. First, Apple. I, I'm looking at a two-day uh, uh, two day can uh, chart here. If you look at the daily chart, just up move, up move, followed by what is this, a doji. Look on the uh, you know the two the two day chart. You know you can see this big green candle was from Tuesday and Wednesday, and then today we got this chop looking like a doji. What does that remind you of? evening star pattern so if this plays out and tomorrow apple continues to chop around you know lingering around 188 maybe close a little below it next week could be bearish keep in mind this is a two-day chart so it could play out a little longer than usual but next week could be bearish for the apple now let me go to the daily chart like i usually do and give you guys the levels i have fib levels from july 19th high down to august 21st low that 188 level is the 618 fib level. If that clears bullish, don't argue with the price action. All right? 188 clears, gap fill at 191 in play and then 192.6 above, all right? If 188 defense, watch for the break of support. You can short 187.4 or you can short 185. Either or is up to you, just manage those risks. But below 185, I would definitely be bearish. Gap fills at 184. FIB level at 182, 180.7 is a high time frame FIB level, and then 178 below that. All right, above 180 and 191, uh, excuse me, above 188 is bullish. Uh, below 188 is still kind of bearish for Apple, all right? NVDA chopping. It's not often the NVDA chops, but we'll see where that leads to. 492.2 is a FIB level, a FIB level from... August 23 high down to August 28 low. 492.2 is 61.8 FIB level, and we broke that down today. As long as below, bearish, uh, 490, 488, and 484 in play. Loss of 484 would be very bearish, in my opinion, putting 480.8 and 475.6 in play. My levels are a little spread out, but guess what? It's NVDA. Don't sleep on this stock. This stock moves. Now, above 492.2 would cancel the, the breakdown, but we need to see follow through by clearing 495, 496.5, and of course 499. If it gets above 499, bullish, big explosion to the upside possibly with 504, 505.5, and possibly up to 509 and 510.6. All right, maybe higher, but we'll see, okay? That's the levels and plan I got for NVDA. Microsoft is testing that 327 support. If it breaks down tomorrow, let's keep testing it. Bull's not showing follow through. But if it breaks down 327, look to short with 325 in play, then possibly down to 322 and 317.6. If 327 continue to defend, that's bullish. However, follow through is needed. Follow through is needed. 329.7. 331 are resistant with 333 above. Break out those resistant levels to show follow through to put 335.5 and 340.5 in play. Amazon recaptured the 135 level and cleared 136.6, getting very close to that 139 level. All right, as long as above 136.6 and 135 lowest, I'm bullish on Amazon. A breakout of 139 would be bullish follow through and could head up to 140.6, 142. 143 and 145 maybe even up to 147 if you want to get bearish wait for a false breakout setup breakdown of 136.6 and 135 will be the trigger to go short 
putting 132.6, 130, and 128.5 back in play. Google testing a very critical level. It managed to uh, clear the 1.5 Fibonacci extension level at 136.45. That is support if that breaks down. Uh, 134.8, 132.8, 131, and 129.5 all back in play. Now it rejected from 138 today. That's the 1.618 fib level. For tomorrow, if bulls want more upside, they'll need to defend 136.5 on any pullback, 134.8 lowest. But ultimately, they need to break out 138 to get more upside, putting 140.3 in play. Meta tried to break out this white trend line, but it's still failing, just basing below. Bears, the longer it it bases here is not a good sign because absorbing the sell order. Eventually, when the sell order runs out, they'll break out. So bears need to show follow through. Break down 293. It's a good start. Break down 291 to put 285.3 and 282 in play. All right. Breakout level is now above 296. If it's above 296, that's breakout mode with 298, 301, and possibly up to, uh, well, 301 is gap fill, possibly, and then uh, 306 and 309 would be next. Netflix, it's challenging and testing that 1.618 fib level at 437.5 needs to break out. If it does, look to long. With upper targets in play, 443.6 to 444 zone. Well, 443.6, 445, and then up to 448.5 and 450, of course. But it needs to clear 437.5 if it does look so long. You want to be bearish? 432 and 426.5 support levels must fail below 426.5. I would be bear biased with uh, 420, 415.3, and... Possibly down to 407.5. I'm thinking it'll go lower, but level to level. AMD managed to recapture that 105 level, but still not clearing 107. It got to clear 107 to put a bottom in and to be bullish. If it does, of course, look to long. But don't force it if it doesn't. If it does, though, look to long with 109, 110.3, and 112.8 in play. If it can't break out 107... Then bears need to take advantage and break down 105. That will be the trigger to go short with 103.5, 101.3, and 99.5 in play. Palantir sucks, guys. I'm sorry, but I'm rolling with Spotify. It's pretty volatile and it's looking good. I got fib levels on Spotify from July 19th high down to August 18th low. All right. The next critical level is at 155.6, that is a FIB level, the 50% FIB level. If that clears, look to long with 159.8, 161.8, and gap fill at 163.6 in play. Support is at 152.7. If that fails, 151, 149.3, and 147.3 will all be in play. This is a pretty volatile stock. I think it's worth trading, Okay. Look at this, dark pool, 451, 1.9 billion in premium at 451. Look at this, 1.2 billion at the 450.3 level. Another one, 1.3 billion at the 450.3 level. Where did SPY close at today? Oh, look at that, around 450.3. Somebody made an end of day move. Oops, sorry, I'm going in my Discord here. Somebody's trying to get in on the end of the day. I don't know. Watch out for any gaps up of gap downs, but definitely watch those levels based on dark pool levels. Now, SPY filter for 500k premiums or above. It is bearish. Triple Q is bearish. Uh oh. IWM is bearish. Dow Jones. Oh, come on. No one's going to trade the Dow Jones. Some good price action. All right. Tesla. It's bullish. Apple. It is bullish. NVDA. It is bullish. Wow, look at these big orders for NVDA. Microsoft, it's bullish. Amazon, bullish. Goog is bullish. Goog with the L is bullish as well. Uh, what's next? Meta. Meta is bullish. Netflix is bearish. AMD is bearish. And Spotify, bearish, all right? Thank you guys so much for watching.
Have a great evening. Peace.